I will discuss on applications of MEMS and microsensors. In the first class, already I have told you that there are various applications of MEMS in different sphere of life. For example, in military, in aerospace, in entertainment, in industrial control, in biology, like that lot of applications are there and today I will discuss some of the applications in detail and details of the devices made using the MEMS technology and sensors will be discussed later on in individual classes on sensors and, and microsystem. And you can see in the picture there are some structures which are very small in size which were earlier made using some uh, mechanical engineering devices machines like lathe machines, grinder, polisher etcetera. And here you can see the structure shows here some gear train. So, lot of gears are connected and they can rotate in clockwise as well as anti clockwise and you can see different teeth are there and they are coupled from one ring to another ring through, this, through those teeth and uh, using some electromechanical energy or electrostatic drive, you can have movement of the individual wheels and as a result of which the other wheels also will rotate either in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction. And these miniature structures have been developed using the MEMS technology, particularly micro machining. In some cases, they use bulk micro machining, in some cases, they use surface micro machining. In this side, uh, you, you will have an idea of the size of the flexures or size of the wheel, the length is, is 10 micrometer as shown here. So, now the overall uh, the dimension or wide width of this uh, the beam will be nearly say uh, 80 to 100 micrometer and similarly here you can see one pivot and all those pivots are made <coughs> using either bulk or micro machining technology and obviously you can see if there are different layers are there all the layers are individually fabricated and then they are bonded together to have the complete structure. And this is a mechanical link and mechanical components are coupled with one each other, so that the complete structure are is, is obtained and uh, you can have some mecha mechanical actuation or movement using either magnetic drive or electrostatic drive. In the next figure, you will see another structure. This is, these are again gear trains and is a basically uh, is a part of mechanical digital to analog converter. You have come across the term DAC in case of electronics. Similarly, in case of mechanical uh, area, mechanical arena, also one can have DAC digital to analog converter. Here it means that digital means a discrete movement and analog means continuous movement. So, the mechanical structure when it needs continuous movement, then we call it is a analog mechanical uh, movement or mechanical signal coming from that and it is, is some jerk or some discrete movement is there with, uh, with a small with a small time interval, if some mechanical movements are there again it stop. So, we call it is a digital mechanical movement. So, from a jerk to continuous movement, the jerk frequency may be very, uh, uh, very uh, small uh, and it or very high, you can adjust that. So, depending on that, you can have some continuous motion of the mechanical gear, mechanical train and that can be done using some uh, links or some, some wheels which are connected. You can see here one to other, then other and this is uh, another uh, some kind of say actuator things. So, they are interlinked and these are fabricated in a lab in Sandia National Lab. So, uh, they have successfully done a lot of mechanical microstructures and with those microstructure they can uh, they can drive some of the uh, micro mechanical systems. 
Now, in another picture, I can show you some of the hinges. So, these are scissor hinge again, this length is 10 micrometer. Obviously, you can imagine this particular size is not of inch by inch, but it is at the best few millimeter by few millimeter. And there are two kinds of scissor hinge, uh, hinges are there, and these are very useful in any of the mechanical systems. So, these are only microstructures. Now, here a pair of thermal actuators are also shown. That means, here actuation is done with the help of not magnetic energy or not with the help of electrostatic energy, but with the help of thermal energy. So, thermal energy there are a lot of uh, materials which can which can expand if you apply thermal energy. And if you make a very small strip and thin thickness very thin, so then the, those uh, the beams will will bend, bend or you, you can applying applying the thermal energy, you, you can you can change the shape of this flexure. For example, you have seen the biometallic structure, different thermal expansion coefficient. So, if you apply thermal energy, so they will they will not uh, they will take some shape depending on whose thermal expansion coefficient is higher and which is lower, how you are pressing it like that. So, in a similar fashion, if you if you make some thin sheet of the uh, biometallic structure, there if you apply thermal energy. So, then if some flexure is takes the shape of some bend and consequently, if it is a link with some of the other mechanical structure, so they will also started moving. So, that means, some actuation can take place by using the thermal energy. Earlier, we have seen in uh, the uh, motor that is MEMS micromotor there, electrostatic energy is used for some sort of movement. Similarly, thermal energy can be used for movement. So, everything you should remember is not in a in a very high energy, it is a small energy and slow movement and slow actuation and that slow movement you, you can you can increase the movement just amplify those things by using the different shape of the the gear wheel etc so that is a similar principle is used in mechanical engineering mechanical drive also now here i will show you some of the sensors now and the picture shows the pressure sensor piezoresistive pressure sensor that means here the change of resistance by changing the stress or strain is the basic principle of making this sensor. The silicon is a very good mechanical material and not only that silicon is a piezo resistive material. That means, if you if here this is a, the, the, the cross sectional structure of the sensor, this is the top view of the sensor. Now, this is the basically beam and this is the membrane and here n type epitaxial layer 8 to 10 micron thick epitaxial layer is here. There what you have done? So, you have diffused the p type impurity into the n epitaxial layer to make some resistance and those resistances are made. You can see this is the membrane and at the at the, uh, the edges of the membrane the resistances are made. The reason behind it is that. So, at if you apply some pressure on the membrane so, the membrane will bend, it will deform and if you do the, uh, the simulation on the mechanical simulation or if you do the strain, strain analysis of that particular membrane, then we will find that maximum stress region is at the edges of the membrane. Details of that simulation results I will show you when I discuss in detail the pressure sensor, its principles and fabrication. Now, here the uh, the piezo resistance are fabricated at the edges of the membrane and all these piezo resistance are connected in a Huston's bridge like this and if you apply signal this point to this point with respect to ground if you apply certain voltage here so we obviously as per the laws of the Huston's bridge or principle of the Huston's bridge we know if all the resistance are same then you will not get any output voltage it will be null. Now, any of the resistance is changed others are fixed then the bridge will imbalance and it will show some output voltage. So, now 
depending on the how much pressure we are applying from the top, then the beam or membrane here will deflect downward if you apply pressure from the top. So, it will deflect downward. So, now as a result of which the sum of the piezo resistance will experience tensile stress and some will experience compressive stress. So, as a result of which in some cases resistance will increase, in some cases resistance will decrease. So, in that case the four resistance will not increase or decrease in the same fashion. Some will increase and some will decrease as a result of which the bridge will be unbalanced and you will get output voltage. So, how much pressure you are applying on the membrane depending on that you will get the output voltage. So, the output voltage is directly proportional the pressure applied on the membrane. So, this is the basic principle of the piezo resistive pressure sensor and at the same time uh, the all the resistance where when you are connected in an electronic circuit like Houston's bridge. So, you have to have the whole structure must not float you have to have some ground plane ground connection. So, here in the structure you can see here the blue color n plus diffusion. So, that here the substrate contact is there. So, here the n plus a p n a p layer and there if you want to have ohmic contact you have to have n diffusion. So, this is the n plus diffusion. So, that you will have the substrate contact and the substrate you can keep it at certain floating it should not float floating potential you should not keep the complete substrate. So, in that case if you float it then your uh, the, the outputs uh, the reading may not be stable it may fluctuate. To have a stable output you have to keep this substrate at a fixed potential maybe it is uh, the ground potential. So, this is the complete structure of the piezo resistive pressure sensor and here is the the uh, uh, the picturia uh, the picture or micro photograph of that piezo resistive pressure sensor. So, another kind of pressure sensors are available they are fabricated based on the capacitance change principle and that those are known as the capacity pressure sensor. Now, in this diagram you can see the capacity pressure sensor this particular sensor will have three parts. Say one part is the silicon diaphragm or membrane which will act as a sensing element. The second part will be a cavity which creates capacitive gap and third part a metallized glass plate provides the capacitive reference plate. So, these are the three parts in this capacitive pressure sensor. So, here what we do using the MEMS technology we fabricate some parallel plate capacitance. So, parallel plate capacitance means there will be two electrode and there will be a gap or some dielectric in between the two electrodes. So, one electrode will be bottom the glass plate which is coated with conducting conducting film. So, that is here metallized glass plate will be the one electrode and the top electrode will be a membrane this is the thin diaphragm. So, thin diaphragm the inside of the diaphragm if you coat with metal film and top side of the bottom glass plate if you if you uh, coat with the again metallic film. So, then with those two will act as a parallel plates. So, in between those two plates there will be either air or you can put it some other dielectric material. So, better air with certain pressure. So, now or you can keep it in atmospheric pressure. So, that be atmospheric pressure will be the reference pressure. Now, if you apply pressure on the diaphragm, then the diaphragm the top diaphragm this will the, uh, deflect. If pressure is given in from the top, so it will deflect from the bottom and uh, from the top uh, to downwards. So, as a result of which the gap between the bottom glass plate and the top electrode will change and as a result of which the capacitance also will change. So, depending on the deflection of the diaphragm and that deflection again depends on how much pressure you are applying at the top. So, accordingly the capacitance will change. So, now the change of capacitance you have to measure. So, obviously, you have to have a uh, the signal pick up circuit. So, that means there the change of capacitance must be reflected change of either voltage or some other electronic parameter should change there. So, either you can use a capacitance bridge or you can 
connect the capacitance in a circuit where the circuit frequency will change by change of the capacitance. So, you can have a calibration curve change of capacitance versus the, uh, the frequency change if you apply a tuning circuit at the, uh, at the output that also is possible. Okay. So, different the signal conditioning circuits are available, different signal pickup circuits are available from the sensor. So, you can use any of them. So, that we will discuss later on in detail how the, uh, the change of capacitance is going to change in voltage, current, frequency, any of the electronic uh, the, the signal parameters. Okay. So, this is another kind of capacity, uh, uh, another kind of MEMS pressure sensor where the basic principle is a change of capacitance by changing pressure. Okay. So, another device uh, here I would like to uh, highlight is inertial sensors. So, inertial sensors are two kinds of sensors that is one is acceleration sensors, another is a rotation sensor, rotation sensor name is called the gyro sensor. Now, here uh, the picture shows the accelerometer and that accelerometer was developed by analog devices a renowned company in USA. Okay. Now, in what is the basic principle? The basic principle of this particular the accelerometer is that you can see here the cum like structure. So, in the cum like structure there are few electrodes are fixed and now this two this side these electrodes are fixed and the periphery of these electrodes are fixed here and in between you see this a this is a vertical rim and there some fingers are there. Now, if you fix that these are the fixed electrodes and if you whole structure is fixed, but this can move. So, with the acceleration if you applied acceleration in this direction. So, because of the mass of the structure this will go down. So, as a result of which you can see the gap between the top the electrode and the middle will increase and the bottom electrode and the middle electrode will decrease. So, that means, uh, these are basically the two capacitance C 1 and C 2. One capacitance because of the increase of the gap will decrease and here in the bottom capacitance because of the decrease of the gap the capacitance will increase. So, that means, one is the capacitance will increase in other case capacitance will be decreased the differential mode capacitance. So, basically when there was no acceleration the gap between the middle and the top and the gap between middle and the bottom will be the same. So, as a result of which capacitance of both the top ca uh, electrode and bottom electrode with the middle electrode will be the same. Now, because of the acceleration movement of this structure. So, in this direction. So, sometimes it will bottom capacitance will increase and sometimes top capacitance that means, capacitance with top electrode will increase. Okay. So, as a result of which that if you can have some different change of capacitance some will increase and some will decrease and with convenient circuit along with the sensor you can sense how much is the acceleration. Okay. So, that is a this particular cum like structure is made using surface micro machining technology and that has been uh, uh, fabricated by analog devices uh, at the beginning and they are marketing this kind of the, uh, the, the cum structure accelerometer which is based on change of capacitance with acceleration. Now, this kind of accelerometer uh, can work in the range of 2 to 50 g, g is basically acceleration due to gravity, cost of each sensor here approximately 10 US dollar per sensor and it can you can make you can make the design. So, that it can measure in along the three axis the acceleration x axis y axis and z axis. It has got lot of application in automobile sector, in industrial sector, consumer and military and individually the, the area wise its applications in automotive it is the airbag, alarms, ABS, door locking and brake lights, industrial application earthquake detection, gas shut up, machine health, consumer application navigation, computer peripherals, sport, sport devices, military application, navigation purpose, munitions and simulation. So, these are various kinds of application of inertial sensors. So, other kind of inertial sensor is a a rate grade inertial sensor which is known as gyro sensor which sense the rotation. Okay. 
and here uh, this kind of sensors are used in case of the uh, uh, munitions for example uh, in 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 uh, civil uh, civil applications or in different kind of toys or this entertainment electronics you can see where some rotation is required required that means uh, the the uh, for example joy uh, the joystick you rotate joystick so there are also some kind of rotation sensor is required i can use this red sensor for example in case of <coughs> missile there also the gyros are very much essential in in avionics the rotation sensors are in are, are important component and part of that system so the here this picture shows some rocket 2.75 inch rocket which is very small in size and there you can have you can see here this is the uh, the uh, the red grade inertial mems sensor and the this is the picture of the chip you can see how small it is and it is fixed at the uh, 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 at this head of this uh, the uh, rocket and so that when it uh, makes movement then uh, from the ground control you can rotate the rocket which direction it, it, will, it will move so that can be controlled remotely by using this acceleration sensors or, or rotation sensors okay so now uh, the another application of those uh, the mems is a is a micro resonator so here you can see a picture of micro mechanical resonator with non intrusive supports and it reduces the anchor dissipation and as a result of which you will have higher q and this resonator has been developed and it works at 92.25 megahertz is a resonance frequency and its q is 7450 and you can see here these are basically the drive electrode and drive electrode are driven by electrostatic energy and these two are support beam and the extra uh, th this is the flexures and uh, uh, these are the anchor and the anchor is supported with a uh, beam and this beam length is 10.4 micrometer and its width is thickness is 1 micrometer and width is in the range of say uh, uh, about 2 to 4 micrometer. So, this anchor is fixed here and now the whole structure will, will resonate depending in how much the the drive you are applying from this electrode. So, the length dimension is mentioned here the width length and thickness and uh, you can see the the total structure will be the 1 millimeter by 2 or 3 millimeter total dimension and it will resonate at a frequency of 92 megahertz nearly and its Q is 7450 and 10 milliliter uh, the pressure. So, these are uh, really useful in many uh, the applications and now this picture shows some RF filters which can be which can be tuned that means filters tune means you can change its uh, the uh, pass band or stop band frequencies. So, the any kind of the uh, filter you require some the passive components like inductive and capacitive particularly it is in RF filter. So, we do not use resistances all the RF filters are normally made using some capacitance and inductors. So, these are the tunable filter structures where if you want to tune the frequency response of the filter obviously, you have to tune the value of the capacitance. So, tunable capacitances can be made here are some of the structure you can see here. So, here how the capacitance are made. So, here is the uh, uh, you see the, the electrode top electrode is the bottom electrode and this is the dielectric layer. Now, the capacitance value can be changed if we change the gap between the top and bottom electrode just few minutes back I mentioned that. Now, for that you have to have certain mechanism by which this top electrode can can go down like this. Okay. So, that means that going down that means bending of this top electrode or deflection of the top electrode can be done by certain techniques. One of the techniques is applying some electrostatic energy or applying some 
if you keep it in some uh, the uh, the closed chamber and if you increase the pressure so pressure also deflects that okay so now by some mechanism if you can change the gap so capacitance can be tuned so that capacitance uh, you can you can connect with this the filter so as a result of which the total uh, the frequency response of the filter is changed so here you can see the total wafer and in that wafer the tunable capacitance is one chip looks like this and is uh, the cross section diagram is like this and here you can see variable 6 bit mems capacitors are fabricated okay there are uh, six capacitors are there and uh, its values are changed depending on the how much area top and bottom electrode you are allowing. So, here in the left side you can see some picture those are the high Q inductors that are also being made using the MEMS technology nowadays and those inductors and those capacitors are connected here to get this tunable filter. So, here is the, the, uh, the micro photograph of the filter the circuit is shown here. Okay. So, now the values of the capacitance are mentioned also it, it ranges from 1.16 picofarad to 2.25 picofarad and its inductances are, uh, are in the of the order of the few nano Henry. Okay. So, these are possible nowadays using MEMS technology and as a result which the RF filters RF switches are being fabricated using the MEMS structures. Now, here are some applications and this is a pressure sensor built on jet plane. So, here in a jet plane in the belt lot of pressure sensors are, are, are connected in different arrays and those pressure sensors normally measure the pressure outside of the plane as well as inside pressure is also monitored. So, for that outside in the, in the belt there are lot of thin film or the micro machine the pressure sensors are integrated the picture is shown here and those capacitances are connected with some circuits and those circuits are some kind of ASIC and they are interconnect each other and how the interconnection runs through the uh, surface of different external surface of the jet plane is shown here. And obviously, when uh, the jet plane moves and it moves with a tremendous high speed as well as the outside pressure is not atmospheric pressure, you know if uh, depending on the height the pressure also goes down. So, so that monitoring of the pressure is very, very important. So, that inside pressure will be controlled and out, because inside pressure you have to keep in atmospheric pressure for survival and outside pressure changes accordingly. So, uh, the, uh, the movement of the total structure, how we will guide it, how we will uh, uh, make the turn, all everything depends on the pressure. So, in each part there are lot of se pressure sensors are, are fixed in different direction and different places of the body of the planes. So, accordingly you can get the, uh, the monitoring of the pressure at, at different direction. Okay. So, another application is the uh, actuators for aerodynamic control, these are some of the actuator array on the leading edge of the wing and of the mirage fighter. So, in a, in a, in a modern all kind of the, uh, the uh, all kind of the uh, avionics or aeroplanes they are taking advantage of miniature and reliable operation of the miniature size and reliable operation of the MEMS devices and here are some sort of actuators is shown these are flexi flexible sensor stroke actuator skin something like that. So, it can deflect it can change its shape depending on how much uh, the uh, some kind of uh, materials are shape memory alloy. So, its shape can changes by changing some magnetic energy. So, that can be used as an actuator also. Okay. So, these are some uh, examples I am showing here are another example. So, some jet engine there also they, they use some strain gauge and which will have 10,000 times sensitivity of the metal foil strain gauge. So, strain gauge is a very important part of any of the civil structures and they, they uh, 
earlier the, the metal foil strain gauges were used and they, they have been replaced by the MEMS strain gauge and some of the uh, structures is shown in this diagram. So, the cold flow and, and hot flow depending on that this shape will change and as a result we, if the shape changes how much the strain is developed in the structure that you have to measure. So, that can be used with the help of some thin films material on some membrane or flexures and accurately. So, its sensitivity also increases nearly 10,000 times more than the metal foil strain gauge. So, another application here is a chemical sensing that is a remote chemical sensing. So, that is also possible and here you can see the structure here this is silicon wafer and the individually addressable array of driver electrodes are fabricated on the on silicon wafer and on silicon there is a silicon dioxide on silicon dioxide top this uh, the array of driver electrodes are formed and then in this direction you can see lot of deflectable the micrometer grating elements. Basically, the gratings are made using the MEMS technology and these gratings when a broadband light is incident over the grating, the grating will deflect and that deflect the this, this def, def, uh, the deflected light is analyzed using the polychromatic spectrum analyzer. So, uh, you can have this spectrum of this and intensity versus the wave number if you look into that uh, this uh, the spectrum then from this peak you can you can identify what are the different kinds of chemicals are available in that particular area. So, by using remote energy for example, some of the chemicals available on the surface or in the environment can be detected using this miniaturized MEMS polychromator. So, one of the advantage of this that uh, the, the this is programmable and you can use in a, a remote way. So, that in a distance place where you cannot go this those particular location you can have some idea regarding the chemical composition or regarding the, the hazardous gas composition available in that particular area. That is using the MEMS polychromator is the device and that is used basic principle is the refraction of light and that diffracted light is analyzed using the spectrum analyzer and it is uh, the, uh, the frequency response the that means, uh, the, uh, the peaks you can identify from that you can guess the composition of that those chemicals and other things. So, now here another application is pico satellite, pico satellite there all the components mostly are the RF switch RF components are there and the first demonstration of the pico satellite was made in uh, in uh, by the Air, US Air Force and Missile System Center in January 2000, uh, 26 January 2000 and two pico satellites are linked by 30 meter long this is that the tether and it was uh, it was monitored by a mother ship Opel a stand for and it was uh, just at 7 February 2000 it was first demonstration was being made and it operates MEMS RF switches in space and these are the basically uh, the, uh, the uh, for tracking and communication this is the tether 30 meter long and these are the small kind of switches which is shown also here the MEMS RF switch. The complete the diagram here is basically pico satellite, pico satellite and its size you can see 2.5 by 7.5 by 10 centimeter and its total weight is 250 gram. Uh, that is the weight of the complete satellite and inside at the center you can see a switch and that is a MEMS RF switch and there are three satellites 1, 2, 3 everything is controlled from the ground station here. So, one of the uh, advantage is the less weight you can see 250 gram satellite that is why it is known as a pico satellite. Nowadays uh, the satellites weights are in the in the range of few tons. So, if you reduce into the few grams so, automatically the launching of the satellite will be very easy and there uh, the, uh, the uh, cost is less, fuel requirement is less and only thing is the reliability how long it will work that is yet to be tested, but lot of work is going on in this direction to make the pico satellite 
and to see uh, its reliability and how much uh, how much information it can provide at the ground to monitor the environment and other things. So, these are the, uh, the PICO satellite program, there also MEMS is playing a major role in terms of the switches, in terms of the, the filters, in terms of the RF, whatever the RF circuit you require and uh, that are being made using the MEMS technology. Now, here is the automobile application, here is the, the picture you can see is a smart, smart uh, car and here lot of sensors, MEMS sensors are used and some of the picture are shown in different places. Here you can see the silicon nozzle for fuel injection and how the nozzle, this is a picture of a nozzle 50 micron by 50 micron and this is the area of nozzles which is used for fuel injection. Here you can see another sensor which is the, the, the structure which is basically the wheel and uh, it can uh, depending on the, the nozzle fluid and it can rotate here also by fuel. This is a fuel pressure sensor. Here you can see the airbag, micro machine accelerometer airbag is here. So, for example, these are thin pressure sensor which are connect, which are fixed at the tire, so that tire pressure can be continually monitored. These are exhaust gas sensor. At the back you can see some crash sensor, so that it can, it can give you some signal before crash. So, these are the fuel level sensors the airbag side impact sensors are here, side impact. So, air condition compressor sensor is connected here. So, the uh, pressure sensors are, are inside in, in, in not only the wheel, not, uh, also the outside pressure, inside pressure you can monitor. Mass flow air sensors is connected here. So, you can see full of sensors are integrated in the whole body of this automobile, so that it can, it can uh, safely run uh, without any any problem as well as without any danger before any danger comes. So, it can give some signal to the driver also, so that he can take care of. So, lot of sensors, MEM sensors are used in automobile. Here particularly one sensor I am highlighting that is the airbag sensor. That airbag sensor is basically uh, the uh, one safeguard, it protects uh, from during accident, the airbag blows and it prevents accident of the driver who is sitting near the wheel. So, that, that particular sensor is a, is a day by day is a great demand and different countries, governments are, uh, are making compulsory rule, so that all the automobiles must have the airbag sensor inside the car. Okay? So, that sensor is in great demand and that can be fabricated using the MEMS technology, this is basically the acceleration sensor and either by capacitive or piezo resistive we can make it. So, now this is a health monitoring application, you can see the picture here micro machine transducer and here uh, again some kind of pressure sensor which can sense the blood pressure is you can connect here that is the blood pressure sensor is a the inside view is shown here. And uh, not only that blood pressure, here is one sensor is connected here which can simulate the muscle simulator. Another sensor is used which is here which is pacemaker. So, pacemaker is another kind of pressure sensor. So, that is also uh, embedded inside the different parts of the body to for health monitoring purpose. Biological applications are enormous. Here is another pressure sensor which is connected at the tip of a catheter. and the total guide wire length is nearly 1.8 meter and the total tip size which is connected here. So, that is nearly 100, 100 micrometer by 150 micrometer by uh, 1300 micrometer and total diaphragm length of the sensor is 130 micrometer by 130 micrometer. It can measure the pressure range is 25 to 300 millimeter of mercury and accuracy is plus minus 2 millimeter and it can work in the temperature in 35 to 40 degree centigrade and its basic principle is piezo resistive. So, this kind of the catheter tip pressure sensor is used for medical diagnostic or during the surgery, Oper uh, uh, doctors are also using the catheter um, uh, fitted with some kind of pressure sensor. 
is a sur surface micromeshing pressure sensor that is used for cardiovascular pressure measurements. So, another are fluidics application and fluidics are liquids or gases. So, those flow measurements can be done using some flow sensors and it has it has got enormous application uh, not only in biology, but also in fluid dynamics. So, so, some of the applications are drug delivery systems, uh, DNA sequencing, drug and gene discovery and its size is uh, very small about say 170 centimeter cube and its weight is uh, 300 gram that is a specification of uh, the, uh, the, the mass spe spectro spectrometry uh, chip that is also for analyzing any of the biological fluids you need those kind of uh, devices. So, some other biosensors are here these are cell based biosensor with micro electrode array these are the typical cells and the cells may contain some of the uh, chemicals or reagents and these are the some channels and some electrodes are there which can you can apply certain field here. So, as a result of which they can they can decompose and you can analyze those composition using some technique and their main advantage is the reagents requirement is very small and you can have reliable measurement uh, on a, a small miniature form small body. So, in this picture you can see some of the neural probes silicon neural probes these are used from, uh, for uh, the uh, neurology application as well as some neuron research is is, da, uh, is lot of neuron research is taking place in different labs. So, for them they need some uh, neuron neural probes and these are successfully made using the silicon technology the tip of the uh, the tip uh, tip of the this uh, uh, neural probes are of the order of say 1 or 2 or 3 micro micrometer and these are successfully made using the MEMS technology. These are the DNA chip you can see total DNA chip and each cell is shown is here lot of uh, the the the, uh, the, uh, the silicon nitrides are used as a passivation layer and DNA synthesis DNA analysis are being made using the DNA chip and these are the electrode arrays and this is the cross section of the individual the cell and uh, in, in bio, bio I will discuss little bit in detail in the bio in different class there I will again explain the detailed function of those DNA chip. Now, these are uh, some of the micro electrostatic cum drive motors which also I have shown in earlier. So, these are the cum drive electro uh, dri static cum drives and these are the motors and uh, it, it's, uh, it, it requires some of the electrostatic energy and it is a electrostatic drive micro motors and I have explained earlier the functioning of this particular the cum drive motors. So, here is another application this is the micro valves and micro pumps. So, you can see here in this particular uh, picture you can see three, uh, three or four pieces one sorry one two three and four. Now, that is two way check valve you can see individual pieces are made separately using the MEMS technology. Now, all the four layers now bonded using the uh, some special kind of bonding machine after aligning you can make bond by silicon to silicon or you can make bonding by silicon to glass and if you bond then you can have the complete structure. Now, here you can see so this is the actuation chamber here and these are the electrodes this one and this one. Now, here you can see the basic the valve uh, the basic uh, the, the pump diaphragms is here. So, now these are two inputs inlet and outlet. Now, this top portion is the actuation unit and the bottom portion is the valve unit. Now, how actuation is being made? Now, you see here is that top and bottom these are if you apply certain this is fixed. Now, this is some kind of membrane. Now, if you apply certain electrostatic field so that the membrane can be attracted with the bottom electro uh, top electrode. So, that means there is a deflection here. So, this membrane is attracted towards the top. So, as a result of which the volume in the chamber will increase. So, if the volume in the chamber increases, so this valve will open it because of the pressure because here initially it was closed, 
now you suck it. So, here from outside pressure the valve will open. So, if the valve will open, so the fluid can go here. Okay. Now, at after the fluid enters into the chamber, then you do one thing this the flexure you release it. That means, whatever the electrostatic energy you applied, you just stop it. So, automatically what will happen? This uh, the middle diaphragm the, the, they will uh, the, that uh, that will take its own shape. So, it will go downwards. So, as a result of which it will apply some pressure on the fluid here. So, then what will happen because this valve opens in this direction it will be closed if you apply pressure in downward. So, the valve will be closed. So, but this valve will open. So, when this diaphragm goes downward, so the valve open, so liquid goes in this direction. So, by applying that is why this unit is known as the actuation unit. So, in the actuation unit by, by changing the potential electrostatic potential or by applying or not applying the electric field. So, you can the, the, the diaphragm flexure you can attract towards top or you can release it. So, as a result of it the liquid can suck and in other valve it can eject. Okay. This is some kind of the micro valve and micro pumps using MEMS technology you can easily make it. So, here are another application which is the micro thruster application it has been developed at our laboratory. So, here you can see there are again uh, the two piece the bottom is uh, the uh, silicon wafer which is which is uh, shaped like say uh, U, uh, the U, U, U shaped the some silicon is etched and in this structure some embedded heater has been fabricated these are heaters micro heaters. So, now there are top another wafer top wafer you shape like that now you bond these two wafer by by bonding machine. Okay. Now, this is a is a vaporizing chamber now the propellant if you insert the propellant here through a narrow tube now if you hit this resistance by applying certain by applying current through the resistance. So, heat will be generated as a result of which the here the propellant which is inserted here that will vaporize those propellant will again when it will vaporize. So, it will exit through the nozzle. So, when it exits through the nozzle it will apply some back thrust it will apply some back thrust because through that nozzle the, the vapor is ejected as a result of which it will apply some Newton's third law motion in a high speed the the liquid is ejected. So, as a result of which thrust is developed in the opposite direction. So, that is that is why it is known as the micro thruster and thrust force is 200 micro Newton you can apply and total uh, size is 12 millimeter by 8 millimeter by 0.6 millimeter. So, this micro thrusters is used proper positioning of the satellite in space. Okay. Now, here are some applications I am highlighting in different areas I am naming. So, in defense application are in inertial navigation on chip for munitions, distributed unattended sensors for asset tracking, border control, environmental monitoring and other, other cases, integrated fluidic system for miniature analytic instruments, hydraulic and pneumatic systems, propellant and combustion control, weapon shaping, arming and fusing to replace current warhead and weapon system to improve safety, reliability and long term stability. So, other applications are embedded sensors and actuators, mass data storage devices, integrated micro opto mechanical components to identify to identify the friend or foe systems, displays and fiber optic switches. Here are MEMS for home appliances, acceleration sensor or tilt sensor it is used in iron position control, vibration sensing in wash machine, biochip it is used in food control, chemical sensor in water quality, electronic nose I will discuss in detail later on, atmosphere monitoring flat panel displays for display, microfluidic chips, dosing systems in washing machines, pressure sensor. So, water level in washing machines, temperature sensor used in cooking, smart dust is used in household appliance monitoring. So, MEMS in IT and inter entertainment, here again joystick and hard disk stabilization there uh, the acceleration sensor is used, gyro is used for camera stabilization system hard disk drive heads in data storage, inkjet print heads for printing, 
optical mouse for computer mouse and micro displays projection portable system. Other area is telecommunication. They are micro mirrors used in switching and optical attenuation. V groups are used for optical fiber alignment. Tunable filters are used for tunable lasers. Switches for signal routing. Antennas for transmission and reception. Inductors and tunable filters also I have shown earlier. So, this is in process control and instrumented application. Accelerometer and tilt sensor again for vibration monitoring. Biosensors quality control in food industry. Biosensor gas sensors in oil platforms, magnetic sensors used in rotation measurement, micro pumps, pressure sensors and temperature sensors has got enormous application in process control and instrumentation. And medical and biomedical, they are active patches for drug delivery, hearing aids for hearing, accelerometers for heart pacemakers, implantable, Im, implantable insulin pump for drug delivery needleless injectors again for drug delivery, smart pill for drug delivery, pressure sensor for blood pressure, these are all biomedical applications. So, these are few applications I, I mentioned. So, other applications I will discuss uh, when uh, other topics I will discuss in detail, some typical applications also I will highlight in during those times. Okay? Thank you. So, today we will discuss on materials which are used for MEMS and microsensor devices. So, you know materials are the fundamental things or basic things based on which we develop various kinds of sensors, we are exploiting the properties of materials and the materials are of different class. And all those classes little bit I will discuss in today's lectures. So, the materials which are used for MEMS are basically from different group, some group belong to the metals or metal alloys, some group of metals belongs to semiconductor, particularly silicon and metals and metal alloys other than those sometimes we use some ceramic materials also and polymers material. So, these are the four class of materials which are used for making various kinds of micro sensors. Now, let us concentrate first on metal and metal alloys for MEMS. So, we use thick metal films for those devices which are used for structural materials for final sensors and sometimes it is also used as mold which has inserted into the polymer on ceramic micro molding. What do you mean by micro molding and what are the molds that I will discuss during the micro machining class. This is, this is a technique by which you can make the mold or micro molds that is in chapter micro machining. Now, this other than this micro molding there are other techniques which are mainly micro electroplating or photoforming, these are used to build thick metal film structure for different components of the micro systems or MEMS devices. Electroplating is another technique which is used for making thick metal films. Thick means I want to see say several microns, maybe 20 micron, 30 micron, 40 micron in that range. If you have to deposit the more than tens of microns, then conventional the thin film evaporation technique or sputtering technique cannot help. With that technique you can get films of the order of maximum 2 to 3 micron and if you want more than that 10 microns, 15 microns, 20 microns like that, then you have to adopt certain techniques. Those are mainly the CVD techniques and the, uh, the electroplating technique. Electroplating technique is getting lot of importance nowadays, because this particular technique is a low temperature process and that stress is known as thermal stress. 
and because of that stress some of the sensor uh, behavior or sensor output may also change. So, that also you have to keep in mind. So, other than the mechanical stress, another stress is also involved which is known as a thermal stress. Hardness is another mechanical property. Physical hardness of a material characterized by Krupp hardness constant and it is in kg per millimeter square. Krupp is basically the name of a scientist. He investigated that particular property of that material. That is why it is characterized by Krupp hardness and it is uh, defined by kg per millimeter square excuse me. Now, others are creep and fatigue, these are all mechanical properties. What is a creep? Creep is basically time, it is a time dependent and permanent deformation of materials when subjected to a constant load and stress below or close to the yield strength. It occurs at elevated temperature and static stress. If temperature is, is elevated and a static stress is applied, then this is known as the creep. Okay. And other property is known as a fatigue. What is fatigue? Change in material properties caused by cyclic loads or stresses much lower than yield strength. That means, you are applying stress lower than the yield strength. Okay. But if you are applying cyclic stress, that means once you are applying stress then releases, again you are applying stress then releases, again you are applying stress then releases. In a cyclic way, if you apply stress and then release, then the material property, that particular mechanical property of the material will little bit change and that is known as a fatigue, as if the material reached its fatigue condition. It, is, it may not follow the linear stress strain relation. So, that is the fatigue. Okay. So, these are various kinds of the mechanical properties, the axial stress, shear stress, the uh, yield strength, brittle, ductile, creep, fatigue, these are the various kinds of mechanical properties one should take care of when you are going for design of any microstructure using silicon or any other single crystal or even using the metal uh, or metal alloys. So, let me stop here today. So, next class I will discuss on the proper different properties of the materials which are used for making micro sensors and MEMS devices. Thank you very much. Thank you.